So this time last year when I did my 2021 TBR showing all of the books that I had and read, I think I had around about 28 of those books. Um, it's, it's, it's a different situation today. I must be stopped. Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. Welcome to 2022, the first video that I am filming in Oxford in 2022 and also welcome to my shame. Yeah, I think you know what this video is. It is the complete rundown of all of my unread books and I feel like I should just get right into it because <laughs> there's too much to talk about. I think when I did this video this time last year I gave much more of a description of each book. I think for this I'm gonna have to settle with just giving you a sentence because otherwise it's just gonna take way too long. I have kind of divvied things up into fiction and non-fiction. I'm gonna start off quite nicely with this little pile that is miscellaneous things, so mainly plays and poetry, of which as you can see there's not that much. Starting off my TBR pile of shame we have Great Goddesses, Life Lessons from Myths and Monsters by Nikita Gill, The Collected Poems of William Blake, edited by W.B. Yates, 18th century women poets edited by Roger Lonsdale. This is a chunky little collection of lots and lots of different women of the 18th century. And finally Hamlet by William Shakespeare which is not something that I'm reading for the first time but is one that I really wanted to do a reread of so it is on my TBR. Start off with this little fiction pile. The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. Blonde by Joyce Carol Oates. This is actually the first Joyce Carol Oates book that I'll be reading. I actually completely forgot that I bought this. The first in Alison Weir's Six Tudor Queens series so Catherine of Aragon, the true queen. If I like this I will of course continue on with the rest of the series and to be honest even if I don't enjoy it I'll probably want to read Anne Boleyn. Treasure Island and Peter Pan in these beautiful v &A editions that I found in Aldi of all places. Wife After Wife by Olivia Hayfield. This is a modern reimagining of Henry VIII and his six wives. Reputation by Lex Croucher. Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. I've been wanting to read this ever since I did my reread of Les Mis but I am still a little intimidated. And a classic that I am definitely intimidated by is Ulysses by James Joyce. <sighs> One day this year, me and Kieran will actually pluck up the motivation to do this, but it is not this day. A book that I'm going to be reading this month for the I Should Have Read That Book Club is Beloved by Toni Morrison, The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes, Scenes of a Graphic Nature by Caroline O'Donoghue, Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders, A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende, The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue, Patsy by Nicole Dennis, and Will by Christopher Rush. Now onto the chunky hardback fictions. Matrix by Lauren Groff, The Giant Dart by Sarvat Hassan, This Green and Pleasant Land by Ayi Malik, The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare, the fiction book I am currently reading which is Leah Wife by J.R. Thorpe, Mrs. Deaf Mrs. Deaf by Selena Godden, Love in Colour by Bolu Babalola, Truth of the Divine by Lindsay Ellis, and my final fiction, my final classic, my most shameful unread fiction book is of course War and Peace by Lev Tolstoy. This is the book that has been on my TBR the longest and I think you know why. And now moving on to the non-fiction. Alfred's Britain, War and Peace in the Viking Age by Max Adams. Natives, Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire by Akala. Chaucer by Peter Ackroyd. Sex Lives of the Kings and Queens of England by Nigel Cawthorn. Mm. Canute the North Sea King by Ryan Lavelle as well as William the First by Mark Morris. Two of the books that I'm of course going to be reading for my Penguin Monarch series videos. Stuart Style, Monarchy, Dress and the Scottish Male Elite by Mariah Hayward. Sex and Sexuality in Stuart Britain by Andrea Zuvich. The Pocket, A Hidden History of Women's Lives by Barbara Berman and Ariane Fenneter. The Social Life of Books, Living Together in the 18th Century Home by Abigail Williams. Blake by Peter Ackroyd. Moving on to my giant stack of Antonia Fraser biographies. Giant not because there are a lot of them but because her biographies are typically very chunky. We have The Six Wives of Henry VIII, Marie Antoinette and Mary Queen of Scots. The Light Ages, A Medieval Journey of Discovery by Seb Falk. Cecily Neville, Mother of Kings by Amy Lysons. How to Be a Victorian by Ruth Goodman. A Time to Dance, A Time to Die, The Extraordinary Story of the Dancing Plague of 1518 by John Waller. The Ancient Guide to Modern Life by Natalie Haynes. Elizabeth Woodville, Mother of the Princes in the Tower by David Baldwin. Contested Will, Who Wrote Shakespeare by James Shapiro. Black and British, A Forgotten History by David Olasoga. Eavesdropping on Jane Austen's England, How Our Ancestors Lived Two Centuries Ago by Roy and Leslie Atkins. Beneath the Night, How the Stars Have Shaped the History of Humankind by Stuart Clark. Renaissance People, Lives That Shaped the Modern Age by Robert C. Davis and Beth Lindsmith. The House of Beaufort, The Bastard Line That Captured the Crown by Nathan Amon. Uncrowned Queen, The Fateful Life of Margaret Beaufort, Tudor Matriarch by Nicola Tallis. One that you all know I am very much looking forward to, which is Stephen and Matilda's Civil War, Cousins of Anarchy by Matthew Lewis. Gentleman Jack, 
Regency Landowner, Seducer and Secret Diarist, A Biography of Anne Lister by Angela Steedell, This Much is True by Miriam Margulies, Twelve Caesars, Images of Power from the Ancient World to the Modern by Mary Beard, The King's Painter, The Life and Times of Hans Holbein by Franny Moyle, She Wolves, The Women Who Ruled England Before Elizabeth by Helen Castor, Game of Queens, The Women Who Made 16th Century Europe by Sarah Gristwood, and finally the first book on this TBR that I am likely to finish because I am very close to finishing it, Five Straight Lines, A History of Music by Andrew Gant. Also popping in to say that I completely forgot this book which is That Glimpse of Truth, a hundred of the finest short stories ever written, chosen by David Miller. The reason I forgot this was that it is on my nightstand, so apologies for that. <gasps> So that's a lot. As I always say, it is my dearest ambition to be able to get my TBR down. Am I going to fulfill that goal by not buying any books, going on a book buying ban? Absolutely not. For no other reason than I don't want to. I'm a very stubborn person. You can't make me do something I don't want to do. But I do think it is important for me to be very mindful of what I am bringing in. As I've said repeatedly and excuse myself repeatedly for doing, I think the fact that partway through the year we had come out of lockdown, I'd moved down to Oxford and suddenly books were a lot more accessible than they had been when I lived in Huddersfield. And to be honest, they weren't that inaccessible to me in Huddersfield anyway. But I am now living somewhere where I am only a 10 minute walk away from a charity shop that would have books. When I go into town, there are a billion bookshops. When I go to my workplace, there is a high street with lots of bookshops. So these books, they just find me. But I want to be more careful. I want to be more cautious about what I'm buying and why and how quickly I'm going to read whatever it is that I buy. I haven't actually counted all of these. That's a job that I'm going to do once I have finished this video and put all of the books away onto my book trolley. But I will put the number on the screen here. I know it's not 20 and uh yeah <laughs> any of these that you think i should prioritize any of these that you've read before i'll be really honest with you i only want to hear good things about these books if you're brave enough to tell me let me know how many books are on your tbr more or less than me i know at least that in the grand scheme of booktube whatever number does pop up is going to be under 100 and therefore not the worst on booktube i know people who have like hundreds even a thousand unread books on booktube so i know at least it's not that dire <laughs> Anyway, that is everything that I wanted to say in this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.